number 8686. Number 188.
Well, greetings. Welcome. Thanks for coming to God's house tonight. It's great to be here with our church family. I'm bl I feel blessed. Um, we'll just open right up into God's word. Um, I've opened up into Numbers. Open up to Numbers chapter 8. We'll stay with that. Numbers chapter 8, um, the book of Numbers certainly has some stories in it um, that, that, that are very captivating. It also has part of the law in it, and that's actually um, kind of some prescriptive ideas of, of how God would have worship ordered, how God would have um, society ordered. Um, and, and in those times, I mean... Uh, I'll admit sometimes if we don't ponder it, it, it can come across as maybe a little dry or, or like you think to yourself, okay, so how does this, maybe better say it like this, we can think to ourselves, how does this apply to, you know, me in Woodford County, Illinois? And so often we see the, the shadows of Christ moving against the wall in in scriptures such as this and I the I don't even know exactly what we're going to read to be honest with you um, it says the lighting of the lamps and the separation of the Levites you know it's kind of the the headings here but just as you as you if you just you know maybe in your maybe you're reading through the Bible or or maybe you open up to the Old Testament and and you just like okay what do I do with this just Look for the shadows of Jesus Christ and, and the shadows of the gospel moving against the wall. That's what, that's what God was, was leading his people towards. Even, even as they're, I mean, right now they're, they're in the wilderness. They're, they're seeking to order a society. They're seeking to um, go from, from slavery to freedom in a healthy way. And, and that's us, right? That's, that's what we're looking to do. We're looking to move from bondage bondage to sin, bondage to Satan, to, yes, bondage to Christ, but freedom from sin in a healthy way. And, and so we can look at this and, and see, glean principles and precepts and ideas as, as we as we read through scriptures like this that might not you know be a story that that, that captivates us does that make sense let's read numbers chapter 8 together and, and the Lord spake unto Moses saying speak unto Aaron and say unto him when thou lightest the lamps the seven lamps shall give light over against the candlestick and Aaron did so and he lighted the lamps thereof over against the candlestick as the Lord commanded Moses. And this work of the candlestick was of beaten gold unto the shaft thereof, unto the flowers thereof was beaten work according to the pattern which the Lord has showed Moses. So he made the candlestick. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, take the Levites from among the children of Israel and cleanse them. And thus shalt thou do unto them to cleanse them. Sprinkle water of purifying upon them and let them shave all their flesh and let them wash their clothes and so make themselves clean then let them take a young bullock with his meat offering even fine flour mingled with oil and another young bullock shalt thou take for a sin offering and thou shalt bring the levites before the tabernacle of the congregation and thou shalt gather the whole assembly of the children of israel together and thou shalt bring the levites before the lord and the children of israel shall put their hands 
upon the Levites, and Aaron shall offer the Levites before the Lord for an offering for the children of Israel that they may execute the service of the Lord. And the Levites shall lay their hands upon the heads of the bullocks, and thou shalt offer the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering unto the Lord to make an atonement for the Levites. And thou shalt and thou shalt set the Levites before Aaron and before his sons and offer them for the, an offering unto the Lord. Thus shalt thou separate the Levites from among the children of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. And after that shall the Levites go in to do the service of, of the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt cleanse them and offer them for an offering, for they are wholly given unto me for among the children of Israel, instead of such as open every womb, even instead of the firstborn of all the children of Israel, I have taken them unto me. For all the firstborn of the children of Israel are mine, both man and beast. Of the day that I smote every firstborn in the land of e Egypt, I sanctified them for myself. And I have taken the Levites for all the firstborn and of the children of Israel, and I have given the Levites as a gift to Aaron and to his sons, from among the children of Israel to do the service of the children of Israel in the tabernacle of the congregation and to make an atonement for the children of Israel that there be no plague among the children of Israel that the children of Israel come nigh unto the sanctuary and Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel did to, did to the Levites according to all that the Lord commanded Moses Concerning the Levites, so did the children of Israel unto them. And the Levites were purified, and they washed their clothes. And Aaron offered them as an offering before the Lord. And Aaron made atonement to them to cleanse them. And after that went the Levites in to do their service in the tabernacle of the congregation before Aaron and before his sons, as the Lord had commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so did they to them. And the Lord spake unto Moses and said, this is that belongeth unto the Levites from 25 years old and upward. They shall go in to wait unto the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And from the age of 50 years, they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof and shall serve no more, but shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the congregation to keep charge and shall do no service. Thus shalt thou do unto the Levites touching their charge. Um, just an, an interesting scripture of God choosing a tribe, God choosing a nation or a, uh, a, a group to lead worship and, and the responsibility that they had and how, how there was, a um, how it was a group effort and there was a synergy in this, in that, in that, and I couldn't point right to it, but. But essentially, the, the people laid their hands on the Levites and prayed that the Levites could lead them well. And if you think about how, how neat is the word that comes to mind, that's a terrible descriptive word, how, how amazing it is that, that there was this command from God and the people agreed to it and the people basically lifted up and supported those who would lead them in through the spiritual things of life. And then and then the Levites took their role and and did it and didn't shy away from it. And 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 there was even a prescribed time, you know, from 25 to 50. And then and I like this, and, and Jed, listen up, you didn't quite make it to 50, <laughs> but, and from the age of 50 years, they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof and shall serve no more, but shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the congregation to keep the charge and shall do no service. So, so what I see here is there's this window of time that God has called a Levite man from 25 to 50 to be a priest. And then he says at 50, 
Now you're released, but you don't go free and do what you want to do. Now you just slide back into the congregation and be a part of and continue to bless and continue to to serve but it's in a different capacity and it's in a different way and it's it's just we see the the seasons of life and and the flow of life that goes through through it runs through a scripture like this and, and right now we're in summer and and, and summer is is, is kind of cresting right now and and so and so we get to do the fun things like 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 pick the berries you know and and the and the, and the green beans and the and the fruit, I, I pulled, uh, uh, I was at Ed Weiss's today, and, and his peach tree is coming on strong, and I pulled a couple of peaches off there with his permission. And I love summer, but I love the fact that it's not like this all the time. There's an ebb and a flow to it, and, and what God is calling his people to and us to is to embrace those seasons, and when, this, when, you're, when your season, when that season is over, He's asking us to be okay with that. And sometimes that's hard. Sometimes, I, I wonder how many of these Levites that were 25 years old looked at that, looked at that 25 year window as, it was, as they were 23 and 24, knowing that this was coming and looked at it and thought, there's no way. I can do this. And then, and then the people, you know, they, they had a, a ceremony and, and they laid their hands on them and there was, there was meat offerings and sin offerings. And then, and, and they, they started and they leaned into the service of the Lord and, and they woke up what seemed like the next day and they were 50 years old. And I wonder if they thought, What is my life going to look like without this? I mean, isn't that kind of how things happen to us? Whether it's, it's, a, it's a career change or, or, you know, a family change as, as the children come and, and you think, how can I do this? How can, can we, you know, and then the children leave. And we think, what's it going to look like now? And there's just... And so this is, this is us. This is life, and it's okay. And God says, it's been happening for thousands of years. This is normal. And I am this steady flow through it all. I'm with you through it all. Now and then, 191... Sing praise to God, all ye who love the Savior. Let's sing this hymn together, 191.
Let's bow in prayer together. Father, we, we come before your throne with grateful hearts. Father, it, it's an amazing thing that we spend thoughts and time and prayer and devotion pursuing thee and, and, and wanting to follow thy path. And then in different ways, you surprise us and you realize that, that we have been in your grip the entire time. And you show up in a way that that we couldn't imagine and we couldn't we couldn't orchestrate and it's just your goodness meeting us in a, in a time and in a place and the, through the spirit through the church um, through the community thanks for meeting us father and we just pray now that that, that thou would meet us here and and that maybe you have a a, a surprise for us in some way a, a, something from the word to, to carry us through the rest of the week, um, something that through a, through a connection from a brother or sister or friend that's here, just meet us, Father, in a, in a way that we didn't expect would be my prayer. Um, Father, for, for those who would be listening in or, or those who would be gathered with us here who are just carrying a, a heavy burden right now, Father, we pray that we could help lift that burden as, as the the body of Christ. We pray, Father, that the that your Holy Spirit would lift that burden, that the Word would lift that burden, and that we would walk out of here free and useful and devoted and, and pure in heart. Father, we need washed. Even as the Levites needed washed, we need washed. Um, we are thankful that thy word and thy spirit and, and Jesus Christ himself is a well that never runs dry. And so once again, Father, we come to the well asking for a drink and, and we ask that you would provide it for us. So um, we ask this in the name of Jesus, our risen Savior. Amen. I've opened up to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, and um, we'll begin at verse 1. And it came to pass afterwards that he went through every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And he had said these things, and when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is, is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil 
and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. And they on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring, for, bring no fruit to perfection. But that on good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed, but sets it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Take heed not therefore how you hear, for whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not from him shall even that which he Shall, even I'm, I'm going to read that again. I butchered that. Take heed, therefore, now how ye hear. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken, even that which he seems to have. Then came to him his mother and his brethren, and could not come to him at him for the press, or the, the crowd of people. And it was told by told Jesus by certain which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. The parable of, of the sower is, is sandwiched here by Three verses in the front and three verses in the back. And the, I love the, the way this is sandwiched in, in that everybody here right now has baggage from their past and has probably carries some amount, I'm sure, carries some amount of, of baggage right now. And Jesus says, if you will listen to me and seek to do what I ask you to do, you are family. That's what Jesus said here. In the first three verses, in fact, if you look here, the only names given in this 21 verses are, are three women. Mary Magdalene, who we know just a, just a sliver about. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Stewart, who none of us have ever given a thought to until right now, right? You know, we don't know who that is. And Susanna, we've heard those names, but the fact that that they're named in God's word. He could have named the disciples, could have named Jesus' siblings. They're, they're named elsewhere. Some of them are named elsewhere. Could have named Jesus' mother. But Luke wrote down three names in, this, in these 21 verses. And they were women who, in his own words, healed of evil spirits and infirmities. They had baggage. And what did they do when they met Jesus? They served him. They ministered him with what they had. They served Jesus with what they had. Does anybody here tend to, from time to time, maybe often, focus more on 
what they don't have, what they wish they could give to Jesus. I wish I had this gift. I wish I could do that. I wish, you know, I should be doing this. Should, and, and Jesus is, and the word of God is like, here's three women that, that were in a terrible spot. Jesus met them. And their response was to serve him with what they had. Like, we can all do that. That is something that you and I can do. And then I get you see verse 19, 20, and 21, and I'll just read read those. And they came to and then came to him his mother and his brethren and could not come to him for, for the press or for all the people. And they said, Hey, your mother, your mom, and your and your brothers and sisters stand without desiring to see you. And and we know from other parts of scripture, you know, as Jesus was hanging on the cross, he thought of his mother and 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 tried and did his best to prepare a path of of care for his mother. And his brothers, his brethren, it says in other places in the scripture, throughout the ministry of Christ, didn't believe that he said who he uh, he was who he said he was. But the book of James was written, James is Jesus' brother. We know that his brother, his brothers and his sisters came to believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God after he rose from the dead. So, you know, if we only looked at these three scriptures, we could get a distorted view of what family ought to look, family dynamics in the church ought to look like. If we only looked at those three scriptures. But there's so much more and so much of, of, of pouring into the family that God encourages us to. But I'll say, okay, I can say it like this. And Jesus' words were, my mother and my brethren are those which hear the word of God and do it. And so here's the, the, the principle, here's the encouragement, here's the idea, and I'll, I'll use my family as an example tonight. My daughter's are up in Pontiac at, at a rodeo right now with their friends. My, my sons are with their cousins, getting together with their Woodson cousins who they haven't been together with for six months. Laura and Molly are here with me, and I'm with my family. I'm with my church family. I mean, that's what Jesus is saying here. My mother and my brethren are those which hear the word of God and do it. Even when we're separated from our physically physical family, God has a place for us in his family. That's the idea of the church. Not to replace your blood family. But when he was designing the church... He said, what, here's a, a framework to look at the church through. Look at it like a family, through thick and through thin. We support one another. We rub up against one another, but we're family. That's what we do. And, and, we're, and when, the, and when the, t the tough times come, when the... When the catastrophic moments in, 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 that the Roanoke Church is going through right now come family comes together and I've seen it here and we see it there and we see it in other places that when Jesus Christ says my mother and my brethren are those which hear the word of God and do it Let's just give a few minutes to the parable of the sower and then we'll, then we'll be done. Jesus wants us to do, to, to do a couple of things. One, he wants us to pay attention to what's going on around us 
and glean the spiritual truths from it. The message of Christ is not only a few can come, it's those who are willing to listen. Those who are willing to hear. Those who are, there's a place for you. Will you listen to what I'm telling you? And, and so it's right, right here, he just, you know, saw a guy so in a field. And he's like, guys, look, look out there. Something's going on. Verse 11, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. So with seed, you have essentially two options, right? That I can think of. You can, you can consume the energy that's in that seed, the caloric energy, in one form or another, whether you feed it to livestock or whether you consume it yourself. You can consume that caloric energy and that's we need that that's appropriate that's good or you can put it in the ground and try and get more seed Cody and I were out pulling pulling ears from the from the fields today and the average the average year was you know a little over 16 around did you know that that God designed a corn plant to, to only put set rows of kernels in even numbers. Most, a lot of you know that, a lot of you don't. Like, you can't go find a, a, an ear of corn that's 15 around, that's 17 around, that's 19 around. It doesn't exist. It's going to be 16, 18, 20, 14. That is just the imprint of our creator. There is no such thing as an ear of corn that's 17 around. So when I say this, so we were, we, so we were averaging things out. It was like 16 and a half around and, you know, 40 long and whatever that comes to, you know, 600, 700 seeds, 600, 700 kernels on an ear of corn. And I just... I'm a geek. I think that's amazing. The fact that you can put one seed in the ground and six months later you can harvest a mature ear that has turned into 700. And that's the word of God. The seed is the word of God. Yes, we consume the word of God, right? For our for energy. We, we take in the Bible, we take in the hymns, we take in the, 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 the spiritual fellowship, but we take in the, the Spirit speaking to us, we take in the, the back and forth with brothers and sisters. We need that for our energy. But we also are called to sow the seed and to see what God can do with that. To see that God can take one seed and turn it into 700. Like, on our biggest day, we have 700 people show up in Goodfield Church. Like, that's a big, big day. Once or twice a year at best. But at some point in time, the first believer came to Goodfield, Illinois. And I don't, I don't know when that was. At some point in time, somebody came to Goodfield, Illinois with the word of God. And we can have 700 people come and worship and praise God in this church. That's the power of the word of God. And we've got, we read about the headwinds. We read about, <clears throat> about the devil. He's real. He wants to take the seed away from us. We read about no roots. Art and I took it. I, I did, dropped some fish gigs off at his place. And Art and I took a Jeep ride, Uncle Art, the other night. And, and we driving along the bottom, just amazed at the, the, the girth of the sycamore trees and how big they were. And, how, 
He's like, I just, he's, Art's awesome. He's like, I don't know how they don't fall over. <laughs> and I said, Art, they got roots. And we talked about, about the roots that, that, you know, that, that we were, we have been given and how we're called to pass those roots on and, 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 and that's what Jesus is talking about here. It, some fell upon a rock and it sprung up because it had, it withered away because it had no root. Verse 14, and they which fell among thorns are they which when they had heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life. And we, what we see here is this progression of, of the, the challenges along the way in the Christian life, right? Do you see that progression? And, and it's so like we're all in the battle. And some of you, <clears throat> there might be some here who don't know Jesus. Who, who just haven't opened up the door of their heart, who haven't heard the word of God and said yes. And maybe it's because the devil has taken it away. And there's some of us here who might feel really dry right now, who might feel like my roots just can't grab hold of moisture. They aren't pulling the nutrients up that I need to be sustained spiritually. And there might be some of us here who feel really bogged down by cares, riches, and pleasures. And it's, and they, and in Jesus' own words, we aren't bringing fruit to maturity. Perfection here means maturity. See, when, when we were out in the field today, we saw plants that had, that had germinated. They had sprung up. We saw plants that had a pretty good root system. I mean, we've got, the crop looks good. We've had timely rains. We had good germination. We had timely rains. We had everything that we need to this point but if but if you would take the combine through the field you would get zero bushel an acre because it hasn't been brought to maturity it's not done yet and god looks at every single one of us right now and says i'm not done with you yet. Yes, there's areas of maturity and immaturity in our life, and, and, and I know this congregation, and I know I see brothers and sisters who have moved on into maturity in, in most, in many areas of our lives, and yet God is not done with us yet. And it's just, you know, it's, it's a warning. It's, it's a real thing. Jesus is saying, listen, cares of this life, riches, pleasures of this life, I'm not going to get real pre prescriptive here. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. We all feel that that weight, pressure, whatever it is, tension. We live in that tension. How about if I say it like that? We live in that tension, and Jesus is like, the idea is not cares, riches, and, and pleasures of this life. The idea is spiritual maturity, and let that be your goal. And, and but on on the good ground they which hurt, which had and so I love this verse. But that on the good ground are they. So here's. Do, do you want to move to verse fifteen? I mean, what verse are you on tonight? What verse are you on in your life? Where is the, on this spectrum that Jesus gives us? Where are you? And we all want to get to verse fifteen. <clears throat> here's what it looks like. An honest and a good heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It doesn't say blessed are the perfect in heart. Blessed are they who their, their true desire is to honor and please the Lord. Blessed are the honest and good in heart, who having 
heard the word of God, ears to hear, by his grace seek to keep it. Bring forth fruit, and it takes time. And it takes time. God is done with none of us right now. He has a purpose. He has a path. He has surprises to show you. For those who have ears to hear, hearts that are open, and a willingness to follow. really appreciated what we learned and read about tonight and as brother nathan said concerning the old testament text that we read god is leading his people to jesus throughout scripture and the bible is really just that it's the story of god working with us working with mankind throughout history um, up up till now and just trying to reach us sending his son to go retrieve us to pay the price for us and I think just reading through this text, I, I, I see Jesus' parable, and these are challenging texts, and we wrestle with these, and the, the people listening to Jesus, you're probably trying to figure out what it means, and then all of a sudden his mother and his brother walk up, and they're, they get distracted. And they're like, hey, that's your mom and your brother. They're trying, I think they're trying to talk to you. you know, and I think of Jesus and just saying, you're, you're missing the point here. Okay, I'm trying to tell you that you can be part of my family. And that my family is bigger than your bloodlines. The blood that runs through your veins that connects you to all these different people around you. It's of little comparison to the blood that I shed to cover you, that would cover him, that would cover her, that would bring you all into my fold. And if you come into my fold and the seed of my word falls upon your heart and I break up this fallow ground for you and I extend my grace to you to receive it, then you will bear fruit. And I'm just so thankful that uh, that we can be a part of God's family and that he can be he is faithful to us and he's been faithful to men and women all through through history even up till now and uh, that we have a savior in Christ uh, brothers if you could please help me with a hymn I'd appreciate that thanks hymn number 218 218 
Brothers, we'd appreciate it if one of you could lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful that we can come to you uh, and take a break from our week of work or whatever it may be. Just come to your house and hear your word. These uh, ancient texts that are so relevant to us yet today. And Lord, we just pray that the seed could fall on good ground in our hearts and produce fruit. That we can uh, just go about our lives as, as lights to the world. And Lord, we just pray in this time for families that are grieving loss of loved ones that um, we just don't we just don't maybe understand why or why it may have had to happen, but we know that your will will be done and someday it will all make sense. So Father, we, we just pray for those that are, are going through tough tough times. And Lord, we just pray that you can go onward and forward with us. We know you will, and we're so thankful for that. We're so thankful for Christ Jesus who came to this earth and lived a perfect example of life for us and died on the cross for our sins. And in his precious name we pray, amen. Thanks, Bradley. Appreciate that prayer. Will there be any brothers or sisters who have greetings for us tonight? From Washington. From Washington. Thanks. Indianapolis and Morton. Okay. Congerville. Bloomington. Thank you. Any others? Appreciate those greetings. Run through a few announcements here. Um, just a reminder that our collection for this month is for Apostolic Christian Life Points. Any Bible class students that didn't get their BBS t shirts on Friday and would still like one can find them in the ladies' coat room. Um, next Wednesday night, a week from tonight, we uh, plan to have another testimony night. That's July 27th in the Fellowship Hall Main Assembly. Plan to give opportunity for Brother Dwayne Freidinger to share how the Lord has worked in his life. There will be an opportunity for anyone in the congregation to ask questions as well. We look forward to getting to know each other better and grow in our walk with Jesus Christ. Everyone's welcome to that. The sign-up sheet is out for the All Church Invited Guests. That's this Sunday. All are encouraged to participate, and you can see Sister Rosemary Wiegan with any questions. There's a double All Church walk-through shower for Nina Polito and Brock Wiegan and Michaela Benson-Smith and Isaac Wiegan on Saturday, July 30th from 9 to 10 a.m. at the Fellowship Hall Gathering Room. Please bring 5 to $10 in a paper product. And if you'd be willing to help with this shower, please sign up using the link that went out in the announcements email, and you can see uh, Sister Lisa Ricky with any questions. So thankful for the word tonight. Just pray that it uh, landed on good fertile soil tonight that can continue to grow in all of our hearts and as we go out um, into the world tonight, tomorrow, that it can continue to spread and, and multiply and bring forth the, uh, the harvest that, uh, that Jesus is looking for. So thank you, and let's have a great rest of the week.